Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and today I'm here in my Pride and Prejudice t-shirt with my Pride and Prejudice necklace which can mean only one thing. Today I'm here to do my announcement video for Jane Austen July. So Jane Austen July is a month-long readathon celebrating the author Jane Austen. Both me and Marissa from Blatantly Bookish who are going to be hosting it together adore Jane Austen a lot and we are incredibly excited to dedicate a month to talking about the work of Jane Austen. We have several exciting challenges which hopefully you guys will want to participate in as well. We also have lots of video plans coming. We were going to make the readathon just two weeks but then we had so many challenge ideas and so many video ideas and so many books we wanted to read that we thought we might as well make it the whole of July and have a big proper amount of time to celebrate Jane Austen and books around Jane Austen. So today I'm going to go through what the challenges are for Jane Austen July and then in a couple of weeks I'll be making my TBR as well talking about what I'm going to be reading for those challenges. So we have seven challenges but only one of them is compulsory. You only need to do the first challenge in order to join in with the readathon and the first challenge is simply to read one of Jane Austen's novels. So that would mean Sense and Sensibility or Pride and Prejudice or Northanger Abbey or Mansfield Park or Emma or Persuasion. Six incredible books. If you have read them before reread one. If you haven't read any Jane Austen before this is a good chance or if you've read a fair amount of Jane Austen but haven't got to the end of her bibliography, now would be a good time perhaps to complete your set. I have read all of Jane Austen's novels and I love them a lot. I have done spoiler-free individual book reviews for all of Jane Austen's novels, so I will link all of them down below so you can go and watch those videos and find out whether or not you might like a Jane Austen book that you haven't tried before. As I said, that is the only challenge you have to complete in order to take part in the readathon. But we do have six other challenges, some to do with reading and some to do with watching. Challenge number two is to read something by Jane Jane Austen that is not one of the six novels I just mentioned. So maybe you want to pick up some of Jane Austen's letters. This is her selected letters. This edition is from Oxford World's Classics and is amazing. Or perhaps you want to read some of her shorter works or her unfinished works or her juvenilia. This wonderful little collection from the Collector's Library has Sanderton, Lady Susan, The History of England and a lot of other pieces of juvenilia and unfinished works. I would highly recommend Jane Austen's novella Lady Susan, which is one of my favourite things Jane Austen ever wrote. It is a brilliant, hilarious, Hilarious, wonderful epistolary novella. Imagine like a whole book where the main character was Caroline Bingley but even more horrible. I have done an individual book review on this as well so I will link that down below but there's also um, the Watsons and Sanderton which are two sort of unfinished fragments, beginnings of novels that are a really interesting read if you've read the rest of Jane Austen and there's also things like her little tiny The History of England which she wrote as a teenager which is really lovely and plenty more of her um, juvenilia as well. This little penguin black classic called The Beautiful Cassandra has several different of Jane Austen's sort of juvenilia short stories which are very very funny. One of the things I quite like about her juvenilia is that it's not kind of held to the same rules of what could and couldn't be published so the characters in it do things that you wouldn't expect Jane Austen characters to do. Lots of poisonings and murders and suicides and theft and yeah pretty dark but also kind of absolutely hilarious. Challenge number three is to read a non-fiction book about Jane Austen so this could be a biography or a work of literary criticism or it could be a sort of historical account of the time in which Jane Austen was living. If you want to read a biography of Jane Austen one that I would recommend is Claire Tomlin's Jane Austen A Life which is really really good and the main biography I've got a lot of my information on Jane Austen from. I don't always agree with Claire Tomlin's literary criticism of Jane Austen but in general her biography is a really really good and really really interesting. And then if in terms of literary criticism here is Jane Austen The Secret Radical. I have done a full review on this. I didn't love it but I think it was a really interesting book and quite interesting in terms of looking at different ways of approaching Jane Austen. When I made that individual review and said that I disagreed with a lot of what was said in Jane Austen The Secret Radical a few people commenting down below suggested to me a book called Jane Austen The War of Ideas and also suggested this to me which is What Matters in Jane Austen by John Mother. In a more sort of historical vein I have these two sat on my shelves neither of which I have read. This is eavesdroppings on Jane Austen's England which my mum has lent to me and I'm really looking forward to reading How Our Ancestors Lived Two Centuries Ago. I think this is going to be more about the kind of history of Jane Austen's time more rather than Jane Austen herself but that is something I'm always up for reading about. And then this is a watch Jane Austen H and Charles Dickens New fascinating facts of daily life in the 19th century. This has been sat on my shelves for about a year and I'm really looking forward to this. I think it will be really fun kind of looking at facts from across the 19th century and I think this will be a really interesting read. The fourth challenge is to read a modern retelling of a Jane Austen novel. Now I've had a mixed experience so far with the Jane Austen retellings. I have read probably about four I would say, none of which I especially loved. I've read Death Comes to Pembley which I found utterly unrelated to Pride and Prejudice like 
The characters in that book were not the characters from Pride and Prejudice, they just had their names, but that's beside the point. There is also a series of books called The Austen Project, which is worth looking up, where various authors have taken on Jane Austen's original stories and re done a retelling. So there's only four out so far, there are two left to come, but so far there is out Sense and Sensibility, Northanger Abbey, Emma, and a book called Eligible, which is a modern retelling of Pride and Prejudice. I have read those first three, but I have not read Eligible yet. And it's one I am quite keen to read because it sounds quite interesting and it sounds like the plot has been adapted and changed rather more than in the other three books. The Emma by Alexander McCall Smith, I, I absolutely hated and would definitely not recommend it. But I do think the Austen project is quite an interesting project to look at and Sense Sensibility and Northanger Abbey, I'm not sure they completely work in a modern setting, but they are really, really good fun. Another popular Jane Austen retelling is Bridget Jones's Diary, which is one that I have not read, but I do enjoy the film of, and sadly one that a lot of people seem to love. A couple I have on my shelves that I haven't read yet. Here's Longbourn by Joe Baker. This is a retelling of Pride and Prejudice from the perspective of the servants. So I think this will be a really interesting and quite different retelling of Pride and Prejudice. And then I also have this, which is Mrs. Darcy versus the Aliens by Jonathan Pinnock. Jonathan is a friend of mine, someone I did my creative writing masters with. He is an incredibly funny writer. So I suspect I will find this hilarious and also that it will probably make me slightly angry because because sometimes Jane Austen retellings do that to me. Also, of course, there is um, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies and Sense and Sensibility and Sea Monsters, if you are so inclined. I'm not sure I am, but you might be, so there we go. The fifth challenge is to read a book by a contemporary of Jane Austen. A lot of people, me included, read Jane Austen and read like very, very little else from her time period. I have read so much Victorian literature, but everything kind of pre-1837 that I have very little experience of. It's mostly just Jane Austen and then like maybe five other novels. So I'm definitely keen to kind of expand my knowledge of literature in the time of Jane Austen. So when I say a novel by a contemporary of Jane Austen's, Jane Austen lived 1775 to 1817. So any, well, any book published sort of within that time period, and I would probably say like give or take 10 years either side, I would count for this challenge. For example, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, one of the few books from Jane Austen's time that I have read, was written in 1818, which is a year after Jane Austen's death, but you can still include that in this challenge. That is definitely a book I would recommend. I'm also interested at some point in reading something by Mariah Edgeworth or Frances Burney, both of which we know were huge influences on Jane Austen. Or perhaps you might want to read something by the historical fiction writer Walter Scott, a contemporary of of Jane Austen's or the gothic novelist Anne Radcliffe who's mentioned again and again in Northanger Abbey. Talking of novels mentioned in Northanger Abbey, maybe you might be interested in reading The Monk by Matthew Gregory Lewis, one that Catherine Morland in Northanger Abbey is a little bit obsessed with. Or talking of gothic fiction, another few books I hear good things about would include Vampire by John William Polidori or Nightmare Abbey by Thomas Love Peacock. Or perhaps you might be interested in reading Self Control by Mary Brunton, which was a novel released around the same time as Sense and Sensibility, and one which Jane Austen was often competing against because they were in the sort of same kind of marketplace. Another book that I have on my Kindle from a contemporary of Jane Austen that I'm really looking forward to reading is Marriage by Susan Edmund Ferrier, which Marissa, who is co hosting the readathon with me, read a few months ago and along with a few other booktubers and really, really loved. This is one of the challenges I'm most excited about actually because I've been meaning for ages to try and read some books by contemporaries of Jane Austen. And then at challenge six and seven are two watching challenges. So challenge six is to watch a direct adaptation of a Jane Austen novel. And when I say direct, I basically mean like period costume, following the book, etc. I realise I don't actually have that many of my Jane Austen DVDs with me in my flat. The majority of them still live at my parents. There are a lot of Jane Austen adaptations that I could recommend. I have seen quite a lot of them. In fact, I have seen every single Jane Austen screen adaptation from the last 25 years, excepting one. The one is this, the Gwyneth Paltrow Emma, which I've never seen, so this will be one I'm sure I'll be watching in July. But I have seen a lot of the rest and I have a lot of ones that I adore. I'm definitely going to be doing a video on my favourite Jane Austen screen adaptations in the month of July. The Emma adaptation from 2009 is wonderful. I also adore this Sense and Sensibility from 2008. I love The Persuasion from 1995. And the Northanger Abbey from 2007 is wonderful. All of these will be linked down below. Then the seventh challenge is to watch a modern screen adaptation of a Jane Austen book, so a modern screen retelling. So for example, you might want to watch The Amazing Clueless, which is one of my favourite films, a brilliant 
adaptation of Emma that does it so, so well. I also hear good things about From Prada to Nardo, which I believe is a modern adaptation of Sense and Sensibility, which I know Carolyn from Carolyn's Reading Rambles really raves about. Or you might want to watch the film where Bridget Jones's diary that, I know it's an adaptation of a book that's an adaptation of a Jane Austen novel, but that counts as an adaptation of Pride and Prejudice. Or there are also some amazing web series that are adaptations of Jane Austen novels. For example, um, the Lizzie Bennet Diaries and Emma Approved are both incredible series that I really, really love. And there are a few that I haven't watched, which I hear good things about. Um, one is From Mansfield with Love is supposed to be good, which is a Mansfield Park retelling. I think there's one called maybe the Kate Morland Chronicles, which is a Northanger Abbey retelling. And I think there are a couple of Sense and Sensibility adaptations out there, including Marianne and Eleanor Take Barton. So there we have it. Those are the challenges that we have for the readathon. Before I go, I quickly want to mention a few of the video ideas I have that I want to make during the readathon. I have quite a few different ideas, but I'm also very welcome to other ideas. So if you have any suggestions or any videos you'd like to me to make on Jane Austen, I would really appreciate that. Please do suggest them down in the comments. I'm definitely going to be making a video, as I said, on my favourite Jane Austen screen adaptations, and I'm probably also going to be doing a video on my kind of least to most favourite Jane Austen books. I know I've done this in a Jane Austen week before, but that was like two and a half years ago um, and quite a while ago, so I feel like I might as well do a, another video talking about that. I might do a video as well on my favourite Jane Austen characters, and perhaps one on my kind of history of reading Jane Austen, and over the last kind of like 11 years since I discovered her as an author. I think I'm also going to make a video on kind of where to go from Jane Austen because I know quite a lot of people who love Jane Austen and read very 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 few other classics so I think it'll be quite interesting to talk about what other classics you might like if you liked Jane Austen. I think those are all the videos I have kind of in my head for now but if you have any other suggestions please do leave them down in the comments below. I would definitely like some more ideas of anything you'd like to hear about Jane Austen. So I think that's all I have to say for today. I really really hope that some of you will be interested in joining in with Jane Austen July. Me and Marissa are are really looking forward to it and we've been talking about it for months and months. We're both incredibly excited to be talking about Jane Austen and reading more Jane Austen and books around Jane Austen and I think it's going to be really really good fun. So yes, please let me know down in the comments what you think, if you're going to be taking part, what books you might be reading, if you have any video suggestions and so on and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.